Hey there, Pastor Eric here from Connection Church in Columbia, Tennessee. The message that you're about to hear, we truly believe is gonna be a blessing to you. So our request of you is if it does bless you that you'll take and you'll share it with others. We want like everything for people to be connected with Jesus. Our desire is for you to be connected with Jesus. Our prayer is that you would be connected with Jesus. But if you share this message with others, they'll be connected with Jesus too. God bless you. We're going to look at the Christmas story from Luke's account in Luke chapter 2. So if you want to go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 2, that's where we're going to be today. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This very first verse speaks of the oppression that they were under, under Roman rule. That all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son. Can you just imagine that? Not just a child, but her firstborn child. Wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Have any of y'all watched um, the chosen mess? The oh my word! I just got to tell you, I want to I want to say this. I watched it uh, Christmas morning, and it was just the clip about the birth of Jesus. And as I was watching it, y'all, I was a wreck, an absolute wreck. I'm watching this. I'm I'm yes, Andrea, I cried a lot, and I'm bawling over this and it. And I think it is because of all of the prophecy fulfilled, all the tension, seeing the relationships. But I think like my friend Gene Fitzgerald said to me about that particular clip, he said, there's one part of it that really grabbed me. And it was when they cleaned the stable out to prepare a place for the birth of our Savior. And literally with the shovel, they're shoveling poo. Because what are stables for? That's where the animals stay, right? So the reality of that, it, it, it's right there, right? This is real. This is not, and seeing that and thinking and going through this and processing it, you, you're like, well, how much of this do we grab a hold of that's real? And so what I want us to do is I want us to celebrate, but I want us to celebrate knowing the reality of all of it. We're celebrating, we pose the question, what, what are we celebrating when we celebrate Christmas? And we can go through a thousand different things. It's the birth of a risen Savior. You know, he's, when he was born, he knew, you know, what, we know what the plan is. Like, born into a plan. But what we're really celebrating in this moment, right now, the Christmas story, what we're celebrating is a beautiful baby. I I don't know if you've had the opportunity to celebrate the birth of a child before. I think we all have in different ways, whether it's a relative that's close to us or or our own child. There's something about celebrating the birth of a little baby. Oh, come on. I remember when my firstborn was born, Ashley Nichols. Some guy came along and changed her last name. What's that all about? Ashley Nichols, Jessica Ashley Nichols, little bitty baby girl, like seven pounds and some little ounces. And and I remember the emotions that came with seeing that child for the first time. 
Y'all, that's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating the birth of a child. Not just any child. I get that. I understand that. But can we for a moment think about the fact that this is a little baby that is in flesh and how beautiful of an image that is? Can we celebrate that for a second? Listen, when Beth, when Beth was um, pregnant with Ashley, we read this book, What to Expect When You're Expecting. Can I get any amens? Yeah. As my wife had to filter the pictures, she would read to us where that baby was on week two, week four, 16. And, and then... And then we found out that we we're going to have a little baby girl. And so the names start coming. and The expectancy grows. And then you see the, the baby bump. And you start to, to get more of the reality coming into play. Do you see that? I want us to see this. That there, there was this sense of expectancy. And it wasn't just, listen, it wasn't just 40 weeks. It was 400 years. Ladies, you thought your pregnancies were long. <laughs> Literally all of creation was pregnant with this expectation of a Savior coming. And it happens in the form of the innocent and small, beautiful baby boy. His name is? Jesus. Yeah. But not just firstborn of Mary. And I think that's important because what we have to understand is firstborn when it came to livestock and what have you. The firstborn is what you gave to God. So it was so important that this prophecy of the virgin birth came about because this had to be, without a doubt, firstborn. Firstborn of Mary. But also, as you'll see to the letters to Roman and the to the Romans and to the Colossians, you see that he's also the firstborn of all creation in that he's the firstborn of resurrection. He's the firstborn from death into life. So we're looking at this baby and we're seeing more than just the firstborn of Mary. We're seeing the firstborn of the church. <laughs> Woo! Hey, what are we celebrating here? We're celebrating the birth of the kingdom of God on earth. I just want to make sure that we know what we're celebrating. Listen, you can look at it from a lot of different perspectives, but I've really leaned in on this thing of the birth of this precious child. But we're also, we're celebrating promises that are being fulfilled. They had heard about this Messiah that was going to come. They had heard, born in Bethlehem. We'd heard these things, heard that, she, that he was going to be born of a virgin. We heard all of these prophecies and they're fulfilled in this one child. Y'all know what it's like to have somebody break a promise? I'll give you one particular example in my life. I had an uncle that promised that he was going to take us to the fair. You know, and as a kid, you know what that meant. We didn't sleep all night. Think about all the rides and forget that, all the fried food. Come on. We were super excited about going to the fair. That night he got his paycheck and went to the bar. Didn't even make it home in the morning. Had, had to get drug home. And guess where we didn't go? To the fair. So I won't leave you that way, Okay. I want you to know that there's this expectancy, right? But then there's this fulfillment of prophecy. There's this fulfillment of prom promises. There's something beautiful about when somebody makes a promise and they actually do it. So I'll give you another example where my dad, he had promised that if we finish this job, see my dad had a cabinet shop. And so as a family, we all chipped in. I basically just held stuff up while they screwed it into the wall. That's how it worked. And then when we were in the shop, I couldn't get around the, all the sharp stuff. Apparently, they were scared that I was going to hurt myself. So you know what I did? I swept the floors. Yeah. I was fine with that because I still had the same reward. And in this particular case, we're going to go to the Memphis Zoo. 
mm, mm, mm. We were so excited. We were going to go to the zoo. But we had to finish this job. And I want you to know, my dad, I watched as they worked tirelessly to finish this job just to get half of the pay. And, and then we all jumped in that, no joke, the 79 canary yellow Ford um, Econoline van. Can you picture it? Canary yellow. It's, it's, just, it's a color. It's a thing. So we jump in this van and we drive across the west portion of the state of Tennessee all night. Why? Because my dad made a promise. And he's going to keep that promise. And then I watched as they walked around like zombies around the zoo while we were just giddy and having a blast because of the promise. And y'all, it was fulfilled. And there's something about when a promise is fulfilled. There's something about when somebody makes the promise and they, but y'all, 400 years of silence. The prophets hadn't spoken in a long time, long time. And the last thing that they said, if you look in the book of Malachi, the last thing they said was, there'll be one that comes like a voice crying in the wilderness in the spirit of Elijah. You know, the first thing that was said when God spoke again, 400 years later, the messenger spoke to Zechariah and said, your son will be the one who prepares the way for the Messiah. He'll be like a voice crying out in the wilderness. He'll bring the hearts of the fathers back to the children. Come on. A promise fulfilled. So what's the, like, what's the result when, of celebration in this particular case? And I'll tell you what it is. This celebration should bring us together to bring people together. Watch this. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. I don't know why. Some of y'all didn't get that. That's okay. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for who? All people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph And the baby lying in a manger. I want y'all to notice something in this passage. Jesus brought a lot of people together. Y'all, we wouldn't wouldn't have even a need to come together on this Sunday morning were it not for Jesus. I I mean, I don't know about you, but I I don't want to go to just some, you know, this isn't a country club. Well, it's, you know, it's not, it's not even just a community gathering like this. We're here because of him. He, Jesus, is the one that brings us together right now. We came to sing praises to God because Jesus, he, he came as a child. He lived a perfect life. He died on the cross. They put him in the grave and the grave could not hold him there. And so that's what we celebrate. That's why we're here today. Jesus brings us together. See, you see, what happened is these shepherds, they had to go. And they, they, Mary met the shepherds because Jesus brought them together. And the shepherds, this is what blows my mind. Heaven met earth. Chew on that for a second. The angels came together with humanity because of Jesus. He's bringing everything together. The heavens and the earth. And not only that, the lowliest with the shepherds. And then the rich with the wise men. 
You see how different cultures, different ages, you know, different backgrounds, some in heaven, some on earth. Jesus is bringing everyone together. Y'all, that's Christmas. Jesus has a way of bringing people together who normally wouldn't be together. Even family members that you normally are like, I don't want to be around them. Well, why'd you do that? Because of Jesus. Like it takes Jesus. But isn't it true? That he can bring together those. Why? Because we come together to celebrate that there was a baby that was born and there were promises that were fulfilled. It's a powerful thing, isn't it? So what's the Christmas challenge? By the way, today's the second day of Christmas. Some of y'all like, we're going to pack up our stuff and whatever. You still got like 10 days left. Chill out. Today is just like two turtle doves. Right? Oh, oh, and a partridge in a pear tree. You have to do that. You have to go back. So, like, we're, we're only like a day two of Christmas. You can't get out of this. We're still. And by the way, it says Jesus is born, not Jesus was born, not Jesus might be born. Jesus is born. Today we celebrate the birth of a risen Savior. You're like, wait, he isn't risen? Yeah, yeah. Because when he was born, he knew where he was going. Woo. And so our challenge, what's our challenge? Let's find it in this last portion of the passage. And when they saw it, meaning when the shepherds saw what they were told they were going to see, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who, were, all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. I love this. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. Isn't that such a mother, like a nurturing thing to do, right? And the shepherds returned, here we go, glorifying and praising God. You know what we're going to do? We're going to take the party with us. Hey, we're not done celebrating. We're going to take the celebration with us. Glorifying and praising God for all that they had, what? Heard and seen and not just that but as it had been told them so once again they even had promises that night that were fulfilled in the same evening right how beautiful don't you love the lord don't you love his plan don't you love how it all plays out don't you love christmas don't give me that bah humbug and today at church my heart grew three sizes come on We're here to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to celebrate when we get out of here too. Because Jesus, not that Jesus was born, Jesus is born. In the present tense, we can see that precious baby. Y'all, if you get a chance, go watch that chosen movie, the, messen the one called The Messenger. And I hope you cry like crazy. It's just a beautiful, beautiful thing when you see it jump from two-dimensional black and white. Not just the three-dimensional, but the fourth dimension of relationship. And see, you know, these were living, breathing human beings that walked this planet. They had lives. Can you feel the tension of a mother who is a virgin who's carrying a child? And a culture that's going to look down on that. But then a, a messenger says, hey, I, I just want you to know this is part of my plan. Can you, can you feel the tension of Joseph who I think it shows a lot about the quality of his character when he wasn't going to, because he could openly and publicly divorce her. But he said he was going to do it privately not to shame her. But then when the messenger said, hang on a second, God's got a plan for that baby. And Joseph says, I'm here to obey. Do you see the character? You see that these are human beings that lived inside of this tension. And when that baby was born, you got to know there was a celebration. You got to know that there was a celebration. Firstborn. Not just of Mary, 
but firstborn into life. Woo! Y'all want to celebrate? Y'all want to celebrate? So in this moment, what we're saying is come and see what God has done. But now what I want to say is now go and tell what you have seen and heard.